My name is Satika. I'm currently a dental lecturer at the Faculty of Dentistry UKM and I'm also a forensic odontologist. Sejak saya kecil, saya memang suka uh, buat investigation kalau-kalau nak jadi nak jadi investigator. But I also want to be a dentist. So, forensic odontology allows me to combine both worlds. So, that's why I guess I wanted to be a forensic odontologist. Our job involves identification of the deceased or human remains. It can be a individual cases like day-to-day -day case load or it can be as big as a disaster. So we have to identify these human remains through dental means. So we were using dental records when the uh, person was still alive and we compare that information through examination of their bodies when they were dead. Satisfaction would be the word because not many people want to do, to venture into this field because you know you have to handle dead bodies but it's our job to give identification to this unknown remains so the family can have a closure for anything that they were dealing with. Dental identification is one of the three primary identifiers that Interpol has recognised. It wouldn't be possible if we don't have good dental records keeping and you know sometimes patients didn't you know come to visit the dentist so we don't have their records. I would say the biggest problem to, to get a good uh, record for each individual in Malaysia. I work with the Ministry of Defence. It's about uh, Ops Dakota. This case, uh, these three missing army personnel uh, was missing since 1945. During the World War II, the US Army couldn't find them at the time until this last year, uh, they managed to identify the whereabouts. So we managed to help identify these missing army personnel through their dental prosthesis. So we can release his uh, remains to the family. So I think that was my sweetest memory. Possibly MH17. We, we thought we could help more with dental records to identify uh, Malaysian but because the records that we received from the clinic wasn't too comprehensive we couldn't identify the remains through dental records so the process were a little bit delayed so it's quite bitter not to be able to contribute more in the identification process. I was still a first year dental officer back then. So the first time I went to the mortuary, I think the most uh, things that I remember is the smell. <laughs> it was a decomposed body. I think I couldn't eat belacan for a few days. <laughs> uh, that was the smell. Uh, but after that, it sort of, you know, shut down. So I can focus on the job. Uh, knowledge driven very precise, determined, a good team player. When you deal with disaster situation, you have to deal with um, people from various countries, from various backgrounds. So if you're not a people person, it's difficult to work with them. You have to work hard because in order to be a forensic odontologist, you have to be a dentist first. So without dental background, you cannot go to this uh, pathway. Uh, among all specialties in dentistry, this would be the one that doesn't really make money. So you have to be really passionate to do this. <laughs>